very good draft for edge players and wideouts. On his overall board, Jeremiah has six edge rushers in his top 20. McShay has five. Matt Miller of ESPN has six in his top 20. And McShay said, put this on the record and play it back for the next 20 years. With wide receivers, this draft is loaded and we're going to see a massive amount every year. So that's McShay hyping up the receivers. And he, along with Matt Miller uh, and Daniel Jeremiah, all having uh, six edge, five to six edge rushers in their top 20. That could help out the Cowboys at 24, uh, it, depending on what happens with Tank and Randy Gregory. No doubt. It's it's one of the most important positions of the field. You absolutely could 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 use uh, a really good one there. And and if it's a deep class, absolutely. Plus, depending on what they're going to do, free, they're going to know exactly what they need. They're going to know if they need Michael Gallup, if they need Amari Cooper, if they need Tank Lawrence, they're going to know exactly what they need. Number three, Jacksonville has a good choice atop the draft. With three top 10 tackles possible, they could choose to improve at left tackle. Their current left tackle, Cam Robinson's PFF grade over the last three years, 38th. Or give Josh Allen a strong bookend presence with an edge player. So they're talking about tackles that they'll have a good choice at the top of the draft. When's the last time? Now, it will get solidified, you know, a couple weeks out. But who's the number one pick? Hutchinson? Oh, God, no. No. I, I mean... Oh, God, no? Who's the consensus number one pick? There's not a consensus number one pick. I think it's Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, uh, Hutchinson, Thibodeau is also out there as well. I Neil? mean... Neil? Is it Neil from uh, the, uh, the the Alabama tackle? Yeah, the Alabama That's why, tackle. Even more of a reason why you got to take a quarterback number one. No, if Jacksonville stays one. Oh, if Jacksonville stays... First of all, Jacksonville has to, has to get out of that pick. But they stay one... But someone's not going to move up to one for a quarterback, it sounds like, unless someone really falls in love. You better start getting set for your opinions and start scripting them and writing them down for when one is not taken. Forget the top five, but the top ten. Oh, it's already set. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, the, I mean, I already have it. Who's the best pass rusher in the NFL? TJ Watt. Did his team have a chance in hell this year to win the title? Uh, no. Okay. Who's the second best pass rusher in the NFL this year? I mean, you would say probably Micah Parsons. Well, I would say Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett. Did his team have a chance in hell? No. No, their consensus the best, and it doesn't matter a bit. It doesn't impact their chance a bit. Not a bit. The 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 the, the, the L.A. Rams had superstars at every position, and they won their final three playoff games by a total of nine points. Like the margin, so it like you you have to. Your only job is finding that guy. And if you don't have him, you have to overpay to get him. Even the chance that he's going to miss. Number four, who is the consensus top pick? And Daniel Jeremiah said it's probably Aiden Hutchinson. 30 and a half tackles behind the line last year. Seems very clean on and off the field. Could be a Jared Allen effort player with great production. Uh, Thibodeau from Oregon, as Troy mentioned. Uh, but probably Aiden Hutchinson, Michigan edge rusher, uh, edge rusher. That's what I'm seeing in most of the mocks at number one. And then number five, you want to have lots of mid-round picks. This is a depth draft. There are starters to be had through five rounds at tight end, Schultz replacement, interior line, needed here, running back, linebacker, needed, safety, needed, wide receiver, Maybe needed. That sounds perfect for the Cowboys. Some mid-round picks at all those different positions. Uh, bodes well for a team like Baltimore. They'll have four picks in the fourth round. Uh, so there you go with Daniel Jeremiah uh, with a little draft preview. Sean and RJ style talking about the strengths and the weaknesses, supposedly. Yeah, like this. This if it's a good wide receiver class uh, or, like you said, edge rusher class, I, mean, I think that makes the Cowboys – decisions on some of these guys that they can make a little bit easier. And here's what Jeremiah also said. Interesting tidbit on the offensive line. You can build an offensive line. Think about this with the Cowboys. You can build an O-line without using all your first-round picks to do it. If you go back and look at the last five Super Bowl winning teams, the last five champs, 25 starting offensive linemen, 
three of them were homegrown first round picks. So the other 22 came outside of getting these uh, starters in the first round. Wait, say that again? Of the last... Oh, this is from Daniel Jeremiah. If you go back and look at the last five Super Bowl champs, right? Mm -hmm. Five times five is 25. Of the 25 starting offensive linemen, three of them were homegrown first round picks. Oh. That's saying you don't have to draft your starting O-line in the first round. No, you don't. I mean... now, you can, obviously, but, uh, you know, because the Chiefs, let's see, they would have won with Eric Fisher, who was the number one pick, or number two pick, yeah, number one. Uh, so there, there's there's obviously guys out there, but, I mean, look, the Cowboys, they have not done things necessarily the way a lot of teams, they, they took, you know, obviously three years where they took a number one pick in the first, a first round pick uh, on an offensive lineman. That is not the norm. That is not the norm, but the Cowboys did it, and it gave them a great line for a while. And now we'll see where they go now this year.